Okay, and welcome back. It's always an honor and a privilege and a pleasure to talk to this man who's been a friend of mine and of this program and of all of you for many years. He is the world's, in my humble estimation, foremost expert on earthquakes, the mechanics thereof, the causes thereof, and what they're all about. He is, of course, geologist Jim Berkland. Many of you know him from listening for many, many years on the radio. Anyway, Jim has been, as many of you know, the man who really understands about perigee, syzygy, the idea of the moon at its closest juncture in relation to the planet Earth and the tidal forces it not only exhibits and exerts on the oceans of the world, but on the, the land masses. There are things called land tides that are amazing. Land tides. When the moon passes at its closest point to the Earth, over the middle of the United States, for example, it actually pulls the land. In a, in a very slight sense, it would make the planet, if it were round, very slightly elongated in, a, in an oval, but be almost immeasurably small. Three feet is not a lot, but it is when you're talking about putting pressure on earthquake faults. And that's called land tide. Jim was talking about this before anybody else. He predicted the so-called San Francisco World Series earthquake, and for that was not only recognized, but also ostracized by the formal geology community, who didn't like the idea that uh, this upstart would come up with an idea, a concept, which could explain earthquakes. And Jim did it. It's quite a story. Uh, he has an earthquake newsletter called Syzygy, S-Y-Z-Y-G-Y, and it comes out uh, monthly. You can subscribe to that if you're interested at all in geology, and I would urge you to do so. So let's see. Are you there yet, Jim? I sure am. Hi. How are you? Well, could hardly be better at this point. Good. I was just telling people about the newsletter and, and some of your background. I was just mentioning that you paid a price for being so damn brilliant uh, years <sighs> ago. Just- for being a maverick. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Oh, what you've... was my little line here? I said, uh, scientific progress is not achieved by majority vote. <laughs> well said. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed, all true. The whole idea of uh, professional science and professional academia uh, is one that does not, in me, inspire great visions of achievement and open-minded advancement. Uh, these men and oh, women my. are not are not hurtling into the unknown, shall we say. Look at the global warming and the chemtrails and on and on. It's sad. It's it's all grant. Uh, it's ego. It's uh, uh-huh. reputations. It's turf and protection thereof. And, and finances and money. Well, absolutely. Uh, see, that was never part of my, my scheme. I was just trying to add to the scientific knowledge and... and, get, and uh, spread the information as, as uh, well as I could. What, what, what Jim did was basically upset orthodoxy in terms of his, his common sense uh, discoveries and realizations of, about how stresses, natural stresses, cause often earthquakes to occur. I mean, the, yeah. these faults slip under pressure. And pressures can come from the tides, they can come from the moon, they can come from a lot of different sources. They may even be able to come from the sun. We, I'm not sure. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but the mechanics of it, but you are. And uh, yeah, t- t- solar effects on this planet, people are in the, they're literally in the sandbox. <laughs> they, they don't get it. They're way behind the curve. And now, yes. let's, let's take first things first, Jim, if we can. Okay. The Virginia quake. Now, of course, as soon as the quake hit, within hours, there were people on the internet beginning to pound the drums of, well, it was harp. No, they were scalar weapons. And then they had a a list of of six or seven so-called anomalies. Subsurface explosions, nuclear explosions, so forth. Yeah, it's a, it has standard uh, signature from a seismographic uh, study, and uh, we know we've had quakes in Virginia in the past. Uh, this is the biggest one since about 1897, though, I think, 
Yeah, but stuff happens. I mean, we're yeah. talking about billions of years, folks. This is huh? nothing. This is oh. not even an eye blink. Uh, in in the overall scheme of things, oh, uh, that's right. The other ex- explanation I got on the internet, and a lot of you heard it uh, and read it, it, was that there were nuclear weapons placed in underground CIA or otherwise s- ultra secret high speed maglev. Uh, transport systems. It was some kind of a revenge attack. I mean, th- this stuff is science fiction. I don't know where yeah. it comes from, but there's a lot of it out there. A lot of imagination and not based on reality. No, no. It's based on keyboards and modems and people's ideas about yeah, and, creating. Yeah, a, chance to, a chance to make a splash, you know. It's all about celebrity, isn't it? If somebody can, like it. If somebody can present... Uh, a ludicrous, I mean, really, a ludicrous explanation about something. Oh, wow, did you hear what uh, what she said or what he said? And, and right away, their their name is attached to something, and they get cachet with it. They get they get that celebrity push. And you're right, that's that is behind a lot of it. A lot of it, of course, is is outright disinformation for a reason. But to, okay, the Virginia quake, 110, 113 years ago, was the last one. I, you're saying so. Were the mechanics of this expected in that portion of the country as you look at them? Is this the well, kind of quake you'd expect there? It it was very relatively shallow. It, it, the first reading was that it was ground zero, and then it got down to about uh, I think seven kilometers, which is is reasonable. Um, <clears throat> this is a, a whole different uh, uh, milieu for uh, for earthquakes than California. <clears throat> The rock there is much more solid, continuous, without a lot of broken faults and thick alluvialated valleys, and so the the energy is is attenuated uh, here. Uh, and the, the 5.9 or 5.8 would probably be felt for 150 miles or so. And there, there went about 300 miles. They they felt this quake up in Canada, up in Montreal, where I'm going to be speaking later this month. Uh-huh. So I'll have something else to talk to them about. So this is all about the the sub substrata or the whatever the ground the base ground yeah. rock, which is, I guess, a lot of granite, a lot of hard things, and the harmonics will transport through that for a longer distance at at intensity. That's what you're saying. Yes, yes, and so uh, some of the damages to the, the churches and all those beautiful cathedrals and spires and yeah. and a lot of uh, sh- shelf damage. This would really be an intensity seven by uh, modified Mercalli standards because chimneys broke, and that's what it takes here for an intensity seven. Where and then in the old days they said they could feel it in a motor car for intensity seven, mm-hmm. but intensity five is where things will drop, pictures will drop perhaps up on a wall and, and the statues and things, but not anchored well. But uh, that's where people really their attention is drawn to. That was that was an earthquake. They finally recognized it with about intensity mm-hmm. five, which is close to magnitude five if you have solid rock. And uh, so here, of course, we haven't had a magnitude five in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, since uh, 2004, and that one happened. Boy, for my purposes, it was perfect because. It was in the top seismic window of, of the year, the day before Halloween. So everybody was kind of all set for something unusual. And here we had the highest tides of the year and the full moon and the perigee just a few hours apart. So that's what I look for. The, the lining up the sun, moon, and earth is mm-hmm. syzygy. Mm-hmm. And perigee is the monthly closest approach to the moon. And when you get a syzygy and perigee on the same day, which happens two to five times a year, that produces many, many earthquakes well above, above uh, chance.